you know, I, I don't know, they say that there's nose cancer, but I don't know, but he's actually, he has a hard time, I think he might have it, I don't know, but his, in other words, he's getting up like 15 years old, and there's tumors on his, on his tail by his little bottom, and baby guy, I have to be able to heal baby guy, oh, I mean little baby girl, baby guy. Baby, go on. Mommy loves you and you can so you can be like a little puppy and you can stay. And baby guy won't have to die this time. He can stay and be mommy near the puppy. Okay, he wants down. <laughs> I love my little animal. Charlie, come here. Charlie's my little bodyguard. <laughs> Charlie, you want me little bodyguard here? Say hello, Charlie, to baby girl, you bodyguard. Hey, baby guy. <laughs> Miss Miss Mason, you're kitty kitty kitty. Okay, so anyhow, I'm going to probably tomorrow. I'm gonna walk over to Laura's because where she's at, you know, it's about it's not very far. I'm gonna wrap this diamond up. Cause she was with me when I got it tested, when we found out it was real. She was with me, and I thought that I'd given it, I thought that I lost my, I thought I lost my diamond. I gave her my dope and thought that I accidentally gave her my diamond, and then I found my diamond, and then I realized, oh my God, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And that woman, oh, you know, and Chance, and oh, it's just so, it's the best, I feel so good about this, because that's all she needs. She has the money to have her house and be able to take care of her family. She gets her grandkids back out of that foster home with some single guy. They, 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 she can't even talk to them, but know where they're at. It's a single guy that her little grandchildren are in. Foster home, and her daughter's in treatment. Shannon, bless you. Shannon, stay there. Stick it out, girl. Do it. You can do it. And the little newborn baby, you know, that she, but now um, it's something's turning out where she might be able to have the baby up in treatment with her. Hopefully, but she hasn't really, since the baby's been born, really been, you know, had it too much. <clears throat> At first, they took it from her and then landed up. But she feels guilty and feels bad, so she's not been holding the baby really much. I've seen the baby. She's been, because, you know, the guilt. I know that feeling because of my children. Laura, <clears throat> Merry Christmas. I have now the test I have is to be able to keep my mouth shut and not call her and say, and because Chance, he's doing homeschool and they gave him a computer, you know, whatever, and I, now the test will be for me not to get so excited and then call Chance and say, watch YouTube, and da-da, and then, you know, let them see this video before I actually do it. I, that's going to be the test, is, being, had, is can I keep my mouth shut long enough to actually do that and get it to her and then show her the video afterwards, you know, but to not let her see these videos until after she receives her miracle, her diamond. Um, She's just, she's like, oh my God, you know. And also, in my last video, you know, when I said, Chance, you know, after he put the name on my magic picture for me, the name, the goddess of truth, you know. Then he, then I said, he turned, then he went back to being a rotten kid, you know, I said that. And I thought about it, and that's not how I feel about Chance at all, at all, zero. Never once have I ever thought or considered Chance being a rotten kid, ever, ever, ever. And I was thinking about that, like, why in the world would I say that? Have I heard it? Is it a program? Is it just something that people say about teenagers or whatever? But that was a horrible, horrible, horrible thing to say, Chansey, and I'm sorry. I've never once thought of you as being a rotten kid. You are a very, very special little boy. He's 15, and he's he's still like, instead of what I said was, and then he went back to being a rotten kid. What I really meant to say, what I should have said, is that he went back to being a little boy. Because he's still got a lot of little boy in him. You know, he's a good boy. Um, Chancy <laughs> and Laura and D DJ and Jada, her grandchildren, and the new baby whose name is Juan, and Shannon, her daughter's name, and her daughter's boyfriend, who was the dope man who got clean and has the baby with his mom. Um, he's clean, his name's Juan, and Karen, who is Laura's ex-mother-in-law, who she's been staying with, you know, they've all been cramped in the efficiency apartment in the next building over. And Karen has done so much for the family. I mean, it's like they've tried so hard to keep their family together. And Laura, though, mainly Laura, I have never, ever, 
ever seen anybody more passionate. I mean, I've seen her with the papers and going in front of the judge and, you know, and fighting and fighting. And they, what they wanted to do is they just basically, the courts, they take kids. And, and even if you don't abuse them and they put them in foster homes and they do things, you know, and it's not right. And they don't think about the suffering of those children. And, and my children, oh, I can't wait till I somebody can be able to, I'll never be able to go back and see my children. I, well, from what I find out now that they, well, Tyler is alive, I know for sure. And Demetrius, I think, too, and now the baby, my child that they have, what they said they have, I don't know, but from what I think, well, from what Master Mason out of the blue, because Master Mason, he didn't know Fred I'm Hotep, and he didn't know anything about that situation, because he's under mind control, and his memories erased all the time, and he, out of the blue, a few weeks ago, called me and said, because I was like, they have my son, which son? I, I was going crazy thinking, which son is my son's alive, dad? What's going on? I was going nuts. And then I, he called me and he said, Freder, I'm Holtep. When they took me to North Carolina and did the hermetic alchemy on me, and I was there uh, three different times, three days, five days, and seven days. And I was drugged every time and things were done to me. But out of the blue, Master Mason called me and said that that's my baby that they have. Because the reptilians, the Sankarian, the Illuminati, Easily, their master geneticists, and scientists, wizards, alchemists, mathematicians. Um, genet anyhow, um, but Fred M. Hotep was one of the seven alchemists in the world, and he had access to the Philosopher's Stone, the Emerald Tablets, and he had just um, been um, moved up in rank into the Order of the Red Dragon. And he was um, one of the seven alchemists in the world under Yugal, the Knight of Grand Lodge of England, who could turn a human into not human, basically take a human and put the Sangarian into them so that they can inhabit the human body as the compatible auras. And I and that was done to me. I thought that, you know, I didn't realize that they had gotten me pregnant without me even knowing it and took my baby out of me. Because even then Fred Hotep asked me if I would carry the Antichrist. I'm like, what you know, I was like, this is crazy shit, you know, someday I'm gonna have to tell you the detailed, very deep details about what happened there. But there's no way my master Mason could have remembered or known anything about that. And especially since he was, I didn't even know him then. He didn't know Fred I'm Hotep, but out of the blue he called me because his memories have been working it, trying, 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 trying to get break some mind control programs and him break it down so that he can remember. And he remembers things in bits and pieces now. And, you know, he's been able to remember, like right the day, well, July 22nd when I was still trying to get to Boho and stop the sacrifices and I couldn't get there. And he'd come back Well, he'd been on a, 10 days shindig in Kansas City and that's the first time ever that he remembered what they do on those retreats it's like a bohemian girl of like encampments they have all over the world okay they have them all over the world like that and he was able to remember in complete detail ah, everything is so fine <laughs> um and totally filled in so many gaps and also confirmed so many of my own thoughts or visions and um, I'll have to tell you about that later too it's very very detailed so what I decided I'm going to do for the story in order to get the story to you thoroughly so that you can understand what I'm talking about is I'm going to start reading to you the letters from Pendar and Queen Elizabeth started in 2006 is when I first met Drake and in 2007 is when I started communicating with Pendar, or he started communicating with me, <coughs> but they knew who I was long before that. But anyhow, I'm going to read you the letters from Pendar, Drake, and Queen Elizabeth, you know, every one of them, and, and go through the whole story for you, so, because, you know, so much is explained, and then I will just, you know, as I read these to you, then I will explain everything, and so then you will maybe be able to have a better understanding, hopefully a complete and thorough understanding of what's really going on here, and who Pendar really is, and who the reptilians really are how they really think, how they really feel, what's really happening, what they're really doing. Demetrius and Tyler, my sons, you totally, in my heart, you're princes and you are earth kings. I do not mean to leave you out. Tyler, I think he might watch my videos and, and be so angry and so hateful because I never talk about him and I never offer him any of my Nashiana stones or never, you know, call him an earth king or earth prince or anything like that. And I don't talk about them very much and it's not because I don't love them, it's just because of the guilt I have learned 
all the time that thinking about them, the guilt is so overwhelming that I don't even know what either of them look like. Uh, I have literally severed, almost severed that bond to where I don't even know or feel any, hardly anything towards my children because I've learned how to damp out the feeling when I start to think about them because the guilt is so overwhelming. But my boys, Tyler, Demetrius, I love you. I love you so much. And Yeah. 